Hi guys, today we're going to be talking about how to turn DNA into proteins. But before we do that, let's just review some general um, vocabulary. So last chapter we talked about the term genotype and we talked about the term phenotype. So just to reinforce what we've discussed, here's just a quick overview. Genotypes refer to genes or DNA. So these are things that you cannot see by looking at someone, but we know that they're important because they tell the body what needs to be made. Now here's an example in this picture. So this is my piece of DNA. Everybody should know that this is DNA because it's a double helix and it has um, two strands. Um, and then on this DNA we have a gene which is just basically a piece of DNA that codes for a protein that controls for instance the shape of a red blood cell. So it determines whether or not you have normal red blood cells or something like sickle cell anemia. We also have the gene here for no shape. Um, and really, technically, lots of different genes along a piece of DNA will control no shape. But for our practical purposes, we're going to make it simple and say that here's one gene that helps to aid the shape of the nose. And then down here, we have a gene that aids for eye color. Now, again, this is all hypothetical, but the most important thing that we want you to know is when we're looking out DNA, there are portions of DNA that actually contain information that tell our bodies what need to be made. And it explains why you guys don't look like me and I don't look like a lobster. It's because we all have genes that are telling our body to make things in different ways. Now, how does this, the genotype, pertain to a phenotype? Well, our genes or our DNA tell our body how to make something or how much of something we need. And so that's going to determine our physical appearance. So again, pH, pH. And again, if it's our physical appearance, this is what we can see. Genes, our genotype, cannot be seen. So let's write that down so that we don't get confused. Cannot be seen. So here's an example. Hair color, uh, hair texture, whether we're right-handed or left-handed, and whether we have freckles or not are all determined by portions of DNA uh, that are called genes that would ultimately code for a protein. So our job today is to figure out how do we go from a genotype to a phenotype because we haven't discussed that yet in class. Now something to keep in mind is that all of our physical features are made up of proteins. That means that we're basically a big pile of proteins. And so if we want to control or understand why our proteins look the way that they do, we have to go back to the DNA. So that's what we're going to be doing today. All right, so let's talk about um, how genotypes determine phenotypes. So here's the central dogma. All of the information that controls who I'm going to be and who you're going to be uh, is found here in our DNA. So our DNA is basically the code for life or the code of life. We can say that. So whatever I am and whatever my body can make is ultimately determined by this instruction manual. And we're all going to have different instruction manuals in our body. We need to take this DNA and use the information to make a protein. The protein that we're going to make is what we end up actually seeing or our traits. And again, another thing that we can use, another term that we can use for trait is the word phenotype. So on your notes, I want you to be sure that you know, so that you write this down, that these two things, we can use these terms interchangeably. All right, here's what we need you to do now. Take a moment, pause the video. We need you to do a stop and job. We want you to be able to tell us how a genotype determines a phenotype. All right, now that we've answered that question, let's talk about some key helpers that allow us to go from DNA to proteins. We've talked about RNA before, but we really haven't spent a whole lot of time discussing it. We've just kind of discussed it in passing. So RNA, let's focus on the name. RNA is an abbreviation that's based on the sugar found in this specific type of nucleo, um, nucleic acid. The type of sugar found in RNA is something called ribose. It makes it very different from DNA because DNA is named after its sugar, which is deoxyribose. So they're similar, but not quite the same. Another difference when we're comparing these two structures is that, look, this RNA is a single-stranded molecule. There's only one strand compared to my DNA that has two backbones, or we can say that it's double-stranded and it forms a double helix. Another major difference are the nucleotides that we find inside of these particular molecules. Remember, all of these things are nucleic acids, and nucleic acids are big. 
So our nucleic acids are our, mo or, I'm sorry, our polymers, because polymers are big. We are going to compare this to the monomers that make them up. And the monomers that make up nucleic acids are things called nucleotides. And to refresh your memory, because we haven't talked about nucleotides in a while, nucleotides are basically made up of three things that take on a very specific shape. There's a circle, which we always refer to as our phosphate. There is a five carbon sugar, and in DNA it's deoxyribose, and in RNA it's ribose, so this is going to be our sugar. And then there's going to be something that shoots off the side. This guy is called our nitrogen base, and you want to be sure that you're copying this down. So this entire structure is known as a nucleotide. Now another thing that we need to talk about, again, reviewing our nucleotides, is that nucleotides have three parts. So let's just see how much you remember from our previous slide. We have a ribose sugar found in RNA. It's not going to be deoxyribose. Deoxyribose is only found in this guy right here. We have a phosphate, and we also have a nitrogen base. Remember, our nitrogenous bases, as well as our sugars, are going to be different. So in RNA, we have a ribose. In DNA, we have a deoxyribose. And in RNA, we have AUCG. And in DNA, we have ATC. G. We have a number of bases in RNA. The specific bases that make this different is this guy right here. We have a uracil. It's very important. We would never find a uracil in DNA. Instead of a uracil in DNA, we have a T, which stands for thymine. All right, let's do a stop and jot. I need you to fill in the table on your paper comparing DNA to RNA. We know the difference between DNA and RNA, but we haven't really explained where RNA comes into the picture when we're trying to build our protein. So something that we need to discuss is a problem in how we make proteins. So we need to ask ourselves where are the instructions kept and where is the construction site? Because these are two separate places in our cell. The DNA, again, holds our instructions for how to make proteins, so this is where all the info is found. But remember, DNA is only found in one spot. Look where it's located. It's found inside the nucleus. Our DNA, which has all the information for how to make our proteins, is stuck inside of this structure, but we actually make our proteins here. So the question is, how do we go from having this information inside the nucleus and get it to these structures, which are our ribosomes. So if we can answer this question, we have figured out the hardest part of protein synthesis. What would you do? A book that you really need to write your paper on is a reference book. And for those of you who don't know, reference books or books found in the reference section cannot be removed from the library. So if you can't remove it from the library, what do you have to do in order to get that information out of the library to your house? This is essentially the same question, or it's analogous to the problem that we have in the cell. Here is where we have all of our information. So our info is housed inside the nucleus. But we need this information to go from the nucleus to the ribosome. So we need to ask ourselves, how do we go from here to here? So let's see how we're going to solve this problem. Here's the first step. In order to get the information from the nucleus, and again, I'm going to circle the nucleus just so that we don't get confused. Here it is, right? We need to get the information from the nucleus to the ribosome, and here's our ribosome. The cell has to make a copy of the instructions in order for it to get out, but the problem is DNA is too fat. So let's look at the structure. This is a fat molecule. I'm going to write that right here. DNA is a fat molecule. So do we have a structure that's similar to DNA, but half the size? So we've just talked about comparing a structure to DNA was RNA. RNA is the skinny cousin of DNA. So if I need this information to get out of the nucleus and the DNA can't leave, I'm simply going to convert the information or copy it to an RNA that can deliver the message to my ribosome. All right, so we have to be able to name this process because you know everything in our class has a name. When we go from DNA 
and we make RNA, or messenger RNA, for it to leave the skinny cousin so we can get to the ribosome. This process is called transcription. The word transcription literally means to copy. So when I go from DNA and I turn it into messenger RNA, all I'm doing is copying the message onto something that's smaller that can leave the nucleus. Now the way that we would copy DNA is pretty simple. DNA and RNA pretty much have the same language, so we're going to use the same base pairing rules. All right, here's a stop and jot. I want you to tell me what happens during transcription. All right, let's go back and revisit the central dogma again because we want to make sure we have all the parts. So we have our DNA. This is where our original information was housed. So info housed in the nucleus. Remember, DNA can't leave the nucleus because it's too fat. So instead of the DNA being stuck inside, we're going to convert DNA's message into a messenger RNA. The messenger RNA, we're going to go ahead and write it down. This is the skinny cousin. Once I have my skinny cousin, I'm able to go to the place where I'm going to build my proteins. And based on what we talked about before, we know these are built in the ribosome. And if we don't make our proteins, we won't have any traits. So we need to be able to go from DNA to messenger RNA, messenger RNA to a protein, and from proteins to our actual traits. Let's look at step two. In step two, the messenger RNA is going to leave the nucleus and it's going to go to the ribosome. Why is messenger, able, messenger RNA able to leave? It's because it's skinny. That's the reason why it can get out of the nucleus and DNA can't. Then the next thing that we're going to need is another helper. It's another type of RNA. So it's still going to have A's, U's, G's, and C's. But in this case, this RNA is not delivering a message. Instead, it's going to transfer, hence its name, it's going to transfer the building blocks of proteins, which are amino acids. So if you look, transfer RNAs actually look like a T. They look like a T, and they have this little round circle at the top. And this round circle is my amino acid, so this is the building block of our protein that we need to make. Because remember, pro-amino. Proteins are made up of amino acids, okay? So amino acids have to be put together in order to make the proteins. What is step two called? So step one, going from DNA to RNA, was called transcription, because transcribe means to copy. Now, when I'm going from messenger RNA to making a protein, we're going to use this word right here, translation. So in translation, we're going to convert the message. So we're going to convert messenger RNA's information into a protein. If we look down at this picture, this guy right here, it looks like a T. This is our transfer RNA. We know that it's a transfer RNA because it looks like a T. And also, look what it has right here. It's carrying an amino acid. And you want to keep in mind, the reason why it's carrying amino acid is because we want to build a protein. And proteins are made up of long chains of amino acids. So this is an amino acid. This is an amino acid. This is an amino acid. This is another one. And then we're going to build, 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 build until we have enough of our amino acids in a long chain to make our protein. All right, here's our, uh, another stop and jot. I need you to tell me what happens during translation. All right, let's look at the summary to wrap this whole thing up. In order for us to survive, we have to be able to take the information housed in our DNA, convert it into messenger RNA, use that messenger RNA to make a protein so that ultimately we can see our phenotypes or our traits. So let's start from the very beginning. Remember, DNA holds the info for life. But DNA is stuck in the nucleus. It can't get out because it's too fat. So we want to make sure that we're writing that down. It's too fat. So we need to go from DNA to messenger RNA. Remember, messenger RNA is basically just the skinny cousin of DNA. And if you look back at your stop and jot, you know that DNA and RNA have a lot in common. But a major difference is, is that DNA is twice as wide, so it cannot get out of the nucleus. So my messenger RNA, although it's made in the nucleus, we want it to leave and go to the ribosome.
But how do we go from DNA to messenger RNA? Let's talk about that. Going from DNA to messenger RNA has a specific name. This process is called transcription. Remember, to transcribe something simply means to copy. So we want to write that down and have that information on our notes. Now, we need to go from messenger RNA to a protein. So we need to ask ourselves, where do we make proteins? So where do we make proteins? We make proteins in the ribosome. Remember, the ribosomes are the site of protein synthesis. So I have my messenger RNA leaving the nucleus. It can get out because it's skinny and it's delivering the message to our protein. The process of turning our messenger RNA into a protein has a specific name. That name is translation. We call it translation because this and this are two different languages. We also need something to bring over the raw materials for actually making our proteins. So we also need something called transfer RNA. Transfer RNA transfers amino acids to our ribosome. And then once we've done this, so this is going to be the intermediary, this is going to happen right here, we'll be able to finally make our traits, which are our phenotypes, or what we see. So I'll draw an eyeball so that nobody forgets.